our journey through Acts is now completed. Well, by the end of today anyway. So I'm going to read you to today the last chapter in Acts. We're going to reflect on it and then we are going to pray together. Hope it's helpful. So here we go, guys. This is Acts chapter 28 and I'm reading it from the modern English version. When they had escaped, they learned that the island was called Malta. The native showed extraordinary kindness. For they kindled a fire and welcomed us all because of the rain and the cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, surely this man is a murderer, though he has escaped the sea. Justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They expected him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But while they waited and saw no harm befall him, they changed their man, minds and said that he was a god. In that area was an estate of the chief man of the island named Publius, who had welcomed us and courteously housed us for three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick with a fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and, placing his hands upon him, prayed and healed him. When this happened, the rest of the island, who had diseases, also came. They were healed too. They honoured us in many ways. And when we sailed, they provided us with necessary supplies. After three months, we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers, which had wintered on the island. Landing at Syracuse, we waited there for three days. From there, we circled around and sailed to the Regium. After one day, a south wind blew, and the next day we arrived at Pitioli. There, we found brothers. We were invited to remain with them for seven days. And so we went to Rome. From there, when the brothers heard of us, they travelled as far as from the Forum of Appius and the three taverns just to meet us. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. When we arrived in Rome, the centurion handed the prisoners over to the captain of the guard. But Paul was allowed to remain by himself with the soldier who guarded him. After three days, Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. When they had assembled, they, he said to them, Brothers, having done nothing contrary to, the, to our people or the customs of our fathers, I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they examined me, they were determined to release me because there was no charge against me that deserved death. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. Not that I had any charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, I have asked to see you and speak to you, because I am bound with this chain for the hope of Israel. They said to him, we have not received any letters from Judea concerning you. And none of the brothers that have come and have reported or spoken any evil of you. But we think that it is proper to hear from you what you think. For concerning this sect, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. When they had arranged a day to be with him, many came to his residence. From morning until evening, he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God to them persuading them concerning Jesus for both the law of Moses and the prophets. Some believed what was said, but some did not believe. Being in disagreement with one another, they were dismissed after Paul had said one word. 
the Holy Spirit accurately spoke to our fathers through Isaiah the prophet. Go to this people and say, you shall certainly hear, but never understand. And you shall certainly see, but never perceive. For the heart of this people has grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and they have closed their eyes. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, for I would heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will hear it. When he had said these words, the Jews uh, departed and disputed greatly among themselves. Paul remained two whole years in his own rented house. He welcomed all those who came to him, boldly and freely preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. So, given that we've come to the end of Acts, I just want to reflect, not maybe upon the chapter, but upon the book in its entirety. It's really funny looking back on situations when they've been written. You know, like when you potentially write of an experience that you've had, it's never the same as the experience in and of itself. I mean, Paul has been in captivity for long periods of time. He has been stoned. He has been chased. He's been shipwrecked. He's been, you know, hounded and escaped from windows and all sorts of things have happened to him. And what you receive is this, this story that's so polished and you know everything everything's obvious the way it's the way it's flowing the way it's going and you have to think that in the immediacy of some of those circumstances what would he have felt like or if not Paul Peter Barnabas Timothy what would they think when they were going through those things were they going oh yeah well, this is all going to be fine I mean, it's almost written like that, especially uh, when we think back to get yesterday and the um, the shipwreck. Oh, Paul knew it was all going to be right. Do you know what? Even things that I am certain of, even if I really know, I'm still half of me worried that it might not, that I might be wrong. We look upon scripture and we might not, see in those moments exactly how the disciples were thinking or feeling. The anxiety and the dread about what lay before them. But they're human. It must have been there. Paul must have spent an awful lot of his time a little bit fearful, maybe a little bit confused, not really knowing where he was going or what he was going to do. And I suppose it's unfortunate that we have to read that in ourselves, that it's not written for us there all the time in the text. I know that I look sometimes at life and go, what is going to happen? What is going to be next? And then when I think retrospectively, I see this thread, this tapestry, this just order that seems to run through it but I can only see that afterwards and if I were to write it down would I include it oh of course I would include it but that doesn't mean it feels like in that in the moment so to any of you who are feeling have felt will feel like you're a little bit lost and you don't know where you're going or if there's anything certain or secure ahead take faith because God is still there and whatever lies ahead 
moon god will be with us all. We might not be able to make sense of it now. But lots of people have been there before us. And there is hope. Because that's the promise of the gospel. There's always hope. So, let's pray together. Lord God, as we finish our reading through Acts, may we keep some of the lessons that we've learned. Those things that you have spoken to us. Those thoughts that have perhaps precipitated a change in the way that we feel about things. That have given us hope. That, has off of a, that have offered us challenge. Lord God, may we not just forget about them, but instead may they go with us. We thank you that in reading through scripture, we can be changed and transformed. And so we pray that this has been for us a time of growth. And for all that we do ahead, Lord, we pray too that we would be continually growing, continually changing, growing in our love of you and our love of our fellow humans, of our world that we serve just as Jesus came and served his disciples and all that he met. We do all this in Jesus' example, following Jesus' footsteps. Amen. Amen.